Hey everyone, welcome to another uh, Sculpt Soiree with Marco Pluff. I almost forgot the name of my own stream. <laughs> By the way, uh, for those who are wondering what Sculpt Soiree mean, Sculpt for Sculpt, of course, you know that. Soiree just means a night, like as a evening night uh, in French, uh, but it's a fancy word. I was like, hey, you know what? I'm going to show some fancy sculpting, some fancy hard surface sculpting. So why not call it a soiree? Actually, it comes from a uh, a joke that one of my friends was uh, was doing. So uh, credits to, to him, credits to Jérôme. Um, yeah, um, thanks for uh, joining once again. Uh, I wanted to take uh, a second uh, before we start to... Um, I wanted to thank everyone for uh, sticking with uh, sticking with this uh, stream uh, so far. Uh, the reception has been really great, and um, I, I keep having like people commenting and uh, thanking me for for doing this. And uh, this is great. I'm I'm really happy to read your uh, read your messages. Uh, it really makes me feel uh, good about this, and um, I just really like love doing the streams uh anyway so uh i'm just really happy that it can be a a win-win situation whereas where like every wednesday I, I i join in uh do a little bit of a continuing on this character and uh being uh like you being with me uh so i really appreciate it it's really nice and um so i wanted to, to thank you for uh for being there and uh hopefully uh we can uh, grow the the soiree army <laughs> even more with the, the the days to come, the weeks to come. So uh, thank you. Hey 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 chat. Um. So yeah. Um. Now that this uh, I've mentioned this, um, I was actually thinking if we could jump uh, straight ahead. In the work. Um, that being said, uh, before we start, uh, for those who want to listen to the same uh, soundtrack as I am listening right now, uh, I'll be. I'm on Spotify. I'll be listening to the best of of uh, Perturbator, Perturbator, however you want to pronounce it. So that's what I'm going to be listening uh, during the stream, and. Uh, I have my little fancy drink here. Look at that. Huh? Isn't that beautiful? This is, uh, I forgot the flavor. It's basically, it's kombucha mixed with gin. It's, uh, it's, it's watermelon flavored gin with, uh, menthol, uh, not menthol, but, um, uh, yeah, like menthol, uh, um, Kombucha, yeah, basically. So uh, a very fancy drink for a very fancy soiree. <laughs> that's, that's fucking stupid. Um, nobody likes my drinks, by the way. So I'm not a mixologist or anything. This is just for me having fun. Hey, chat. Hey, Alex. Hey, Toki Pigeon. Toki Pigeon. Hey, Cam. Hey, Bloku. Bluco. Bluco. I probably mispronounced like ninety percent of all the the nicknames, so uh, sorry about that. <laughs> hi, hi, hi! All right, great. Um, well, let's dive in. Um, I actually loaded this uh, character here because uh, last time some people were like, "Hey, it would be cool to see like some of the other characters uh, sometime." And uh, I won't really be like going um, going uh, into like this character, except if I need it, because I really want to continue on the, the Mantis character. But I just wanted to um, let's, uh, clear the screen. I just wanted to show that like basically when I where I'm heading with uh, the Mant uh, Mantis character is exactly at the same place as this character here in terms of like finish and polish and everything. So I'll 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 have the chance to really go through like uh all this piece these pieces and everything. 
uh, I'll, I'm basically going to be using the same process. Uh, the Mantis character might be a little bit more like uh, elegant um, than this character, who's like really uh, heavy and heavy in machinery as well. But uh, you'll see that pretty much the same techniques are going to be used for this character. And uh, when I'm, it's going to come to the the head. I'm going to be uh, using the same visual language and that sort of stuff. Thanks, uh, SKR. SKR 9000. So uh, yeah, I might be actually like using this character sometimes to go and pick some pieces. I already started to do that on the character anyway. Like you saw me reuse uh, fingers and stuff like that. So uh, and other parts of this character as well. So let's put it on the side for the moment. Uh, actually, I will uh, do more than that. I will uh, delete the character just so make, to make sure it actually gets out of the RAM because the character is, the file itself is like 4.5 gigabytes just for the, the Beatles. So let's say that it's pretty busy. So for this character here, I wanted to just have something on the side here. A reminder of my visual language because today what i'll be doing is um i'm actually going to uh do one of the blades here or at least like that's what i'm going to aim to do uh someone already took that <laughs> that's cool two more zeros uh so yeah 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 uh i'll be um taking this blade here and uh, making it in a high-res uh, format, let's say. I have a couple of uh, reference of uh, combat knives here to um, help me with maybe like uh, figuring out what I want to do in terms of like the look. Uh, but I pretty much have a, already a bit of an idea. I'll just be continuing the same visual language. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, so uh, when I did this blocking here, I pretty much just like took a like, cube and I just elongated elongate it until I actually have like the shape that I find that fits with the rest of the character, like the good line flow and whatnot. Uh, something that really works well as an extension of the arm. Uh, and uh, the, the, by the way, the arms at the back are going to be a total duplication of the our arms at the front. They're not going to be bigger, smaller or anything. So... I'll get to that at some point for the moment. There you go. So what to do with uh, when you're blocking is actually in this um, angle. Well, unfortunately, um, oh, ZBrush still doesn't have my favorite, the favorite thing that I, I, I want for the moment. And it's to actually have local symmetry, to be able to actually place an object and work on the object in place, but having like the symmetry being adjusted to the placement, the orientation of this object. So what we have to do is I'm going to have to work, uh, put the object back in, in the orthographic um, position uh, temporarily. And for that, what I'll be doing is I'll actually be working on a different scene. So we're gonna start by cloning uh, this into its own ZBrush tool. Well, Z tool, whatever. So delete parts of it. Oops. Delete the subdivisions. All right. And uh, I'll put the uh, I'll put the floor back because I'm actually going to. You see this? Oh no, it's not. The gizmo is not uh, yet. It's not still uh, placed correctly. So uh, whatever. I'll take the transpose line here. I'll be just placing this back here. Thanks for the follow. So you already see that my object was not perfectly placed. Well, I mean, it's kind of like crooked, so I'll be fixing that. But uh, for the moment, yeah. So let's place it like this. And it's also on one side, there's some things and the underside there isn't. So yeah, it'll need a, a mirror and weld to, to fix this. For the moment, let's just make sure it's in the middle. Thanks for the follow as well. All right. So let's just manually this back here. 
You know what? I really wonder how much people are watching my stream or listening to my video on YouTube that are, uh, thanks for the follow, um, that are not uh, actually 3D artists or like 2D artists like or like artists in that sense. Like, I wonder if like this is interesting for other people thanks for the follow again jesus christ this is the uh, the follow episode <laughs> keep him coming keep him coming i am on fire <laughs> what <laughs> well you know what i appreciate that <laughs> you know what i should actually like take like a Red Bull before starting each episode. Who said that taking a, a Red Bull at 9 p.m. was a bad thing, eh? Show me the science. <laughs> Thanks for the comment, the one effect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh yes, I want to make this a um a constant for uh as much as I as long as I can. I uh, I love doing that. It uh, also it helps me to not work always on the same model because I'm working on a huge project right now on, on the side. And uh, sometimes it gets it gets pretty tedious, and I actually uh, like get not bored of it, but like I I I, I lose um, objectivity, and I find that uh, doing this uh, once a week, working on this character once a week, really helps to just like um, um, I just have the expression in French in my head. In French, it's called. Actually, in French, Quebecer, it's called changer le mal de place, which means uh, changing the area of aching, I guess. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that um, it just helps to uh, not get burdened by the same task too much. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I uh, I want to continue doing that. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm also going to keep on this side just a little screenshot of, like, how it looks with the arm. There we go. All right. I could have even just, like, get the arm in this scene to know, like, how it enters in. But you know what? I don't think that it's going to be that much of a problem. I kind of, like, see it well here. So, uh... uh yeah, no, I have sleeping sleeping problems as well, so uh, I hear you. Thanks for the follow. Do you have one of the Punisher statue? Uh, yes. Actually, you know what? Give me a sec. It's whoop, this guy right here, next to the 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 the, the zebrush, next to the zebrush trophy that I uh, I won with that uh, yeah. that statue. So pretty proud of that one. Keep it close. There you go. All right, all right. Let's get into it. So what I did right now is I simply placed it uh, in the middle. And uh, now that it's in the middle, it'll mirror and weld. Helps it to um, become symmetrical. Use the move brush because it was a little bit skewered, and now I actually have it fully symmetrical. So uh, I'll continue by actually splitting this object into uh, three pieces. The three pieces that we can see here. So there's this uh, gray metal part. Actually, I'll put everything on the same sub tool first, and with the sliced curve, I'm simply changing those. Oops. Making sure that they all have one polygroup each. And at this point, I will be uh, splitting these into different subtools. So I, it's now that they're in polygon, I control click on it, and then I just do delete, uh, not delete hidden, but split, split hidden. She can have here, split hidden. 
but I'll be using my shortcuts like always. All right. I'll be adding the star at the beginning. This is just an ha a habit that I have. And I'll be saving this for blade zero one. There we go. By the way, for those who are wondering why I keep a star at the top here, it's because I've been using this uh, sub this um, this tool uh, that's called uh, Z Scene Manager, and um, I, I use it a bit less these times, to be honest, though. But like, I still actually use it to because it has some really cool uh, um, like description of like what's enabled on the sub tool right now, and it helps to not go through like all your sub tools to see like what's up. If one has noise mask or a morph target or a layer or isn't double sided, I can see it from this description here. And there's a few other man uh, manipulation you can have, but technically, when you activate this uh, this sub tool, if you don't have a star at the beginning, it will add one for you. So I I pretty much just um, put a star at the beginning all the time just because of that. It's just a reflex. So, all right. Uh, next thing that I'll be doing is I will simply uh, use Dynamesh for the moment just to refine the shape. So this is going to be a good value for uh, their uh, resolution around uh, 1600. clip a few things all right and let's uh let's start by uh, a part that will be really different from everything else that i've been working on on this character so far and uh i'm talking about the the tip of the blade here so um i i, I might do a little topology real quick because uh, to make like the precision for the the sharpness of the blade i might actually um have a more of an advantage to work with topology than trying to sculpt it. Uh, but first, I just want to make sure that I'm going for the right shape. So let's just, uh, I'm going going to do a bit of actually design right here. And I'll be, uh, I'll be playing around with uh, the shape a little bit. It's not going to be really complex. Um, but uh, yeah, I just want to have a, a good circle here for those who don't know that little tip is if you use clip uh clip circle and you have the circle inside of a, an object and you click alt it actually spreads all the polygons to the extremities of the circle topology sucks but like if you use dynamesh you get it back so eh, there we go who cares all right let's use trim hole back face to kind of like give it some beveling this it's a little bit crooked. There you go. So for the blade here, of course, it's going to be. Um, Put some lazy mouse on this. First, it's going to have like the, the blade thingy. Just do it real quick for the moment, just for visualization. Um, and yeah, oh yeah, you know what? What I'll be doing also is I'll be using a um another sub tool just to really calculate um the ellipse see if it's going to be like just to make sure that like my ellipse has a, a correct uh shape so this is just going to be some placeholder to make sure that uh the roundness of the object is uh is cal well calculated There we go, just like this. 
and uh, okay so you see like now what I can do is brush I can really make sure that it's a round 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 ellipse and uh, I can do the same for uh, for the other here So I'll simply rotate this sphere like this. And this is going to be uh, the outside shape that I'm going to want to follow. So a little bit more like this. All right. So now that I have this, I will lasso this thing here. There we go. Actually, make sure to not touch the sphere part. And the extremity, I'm, I'm actually going to make it kind of like a uh, first, like a, a hook thing. There you go. All right, so that's going to be the uh, the shape. I'm going to keep those here. I'm actually going right away to start using folders. So this one's going to be blade. I'm going to put those outside of the folder. I'm going to call them blade back for backup. There we go. Just for the sake of it, clean this a bit, but I'll be making like a, a cleaner topology for it uh, in not too, too, too long. So it's just temporarily. Thanks for the follow. All right, I'm just gonna be doing something because it's actually a bit hot right now. Last week was so cold. It was like minus 30 on Wednesday. And uh, today it's like minus eight. And it's, uh, yeah, it's warm. So, uh, and if for some of you it might not be that warm, but uh, in contrast, uh, let me tell you, it's pretty warm. All right, so this is going to be the shape. I'm going to want to add like little dents like this all around, all along here. Maybe I'm gonna leave, yeah, just maybe uh, in this section, I'm gonna leave like this part of the blade, but make it one third, one third, one third. There you go. One third dense, and then this is going to be a sharp place. Uh, something else that I want to do is make sure that this has a bit of a swing to it. This is going to be good. Just like this. And um, am I going to want to add other shapes for that? That's already going to be uh, somewhat of a good shape. Let me think. Bonjour, Mazzi. Um, I uh, is now ninety four. I suggest that what you do is um, just use a um, little smaller res resolution for your Dynamesh. Uh, this way, you won't get tempted to um, put on to put detail on. That's what I do.
I'll probably be placing a, a joint, uh, some joint IMM in there. And, uh, anyways, let's uh, move on to this piece here. It's already been dynameshed. I'm going to use planar tool in backface mode just to make sure that the thickness is constant. Also, by the way, I'll, I'm probably going to play with the roundness of this shape, making like this edge of the blade rounder. Look for the moment. Shape here. Thanks for the follow. Ponscar. Cool. Thanks for the follow. Good evening, Zilat. <laughs> okay, I see. Fire Fufi right there is somebody that I know that creates really great emojis. Looks like those emojis don't work right now, which makes me very sad. Thanks for the follow.
<laughs> Thanks, Alex. All right. So those, uh, those are probably the clean shape I'll be uh, I'll be using for uh, for this uh, for this model here. Um, so I mean, at that point, I could actually uh, like mm, you know what? Just let me think for a sec. I might actually not like actually want to run this like this. Yeah. Oops, I lost my clip thing. I think that's going to be uh it's going to be better. All right. Um this I don't like too much extruded after all. And um maybe it could be cool to have a little thing that's coming out. Let's mask part of this like this. It could come out like this here. Is that cool? Uh, not cool enough. Even if it's just a little bit, kind of looks weird, so I will simply uh, not do that. All right. Let's uh, place a, a joint here and here just to use as um, like reference. And uh, just for the sake of uh, homogeneity, I'll simply take something that exists on uh, the model here already. Those joints, uh, well, if I make those joints and just make them really small, it might actually look a bit odd. So I'll probably be using like these things here. I'll well, we grab it, insert it in the scene here. Delete everything. And to replace this object uh, in a more uh, orthographic uh, way, I'll be using the uh, rotation transpose line. And uh, what I'll do is I'll start by kind of like going roughly. And if I want to really make sure that it's straight, I'll uh, try to grab like a straight line in the topology and I'll rotate it and press shift and it's going to snap. Um, it's going to snap straight. So See, I'm just missing this angle here. The reality is that this IMM is a bit uh, crooked, but uh, it doesn't really it doesn't really show. So I am um, not going to uh, die on that hill. Trying to make it perfect. See, so just like that, it's going to be enough. And uh, I'll uh, mirror and weld it. The other side, there you go. That's going to be good enough. Let's actually 
might be a bit too thick. I'm realizing that for it to be a little bit more elegant, it should probably be a little bit thinner. Let's move the object in a bit. I'll be using the same subtool here as well. Yeah, I see what you mean. Um, West 3D art. Um, it would kind of like interfere with like the other part here of the arm so i'm not trying to make this perfect like it's like if you test it it's not even going to really rotate well on itself but it's not made for animation so i'm not really worrying about it you see it's not closing perfectly like if i i really wanted it to close perfectly i would need to like to create like a a hole in here for it to really go inside which i could i mean i could do that it's not going to cost much but i i, I what i'm trying to say is that i don't really uh, need this to be like working for animation because it's not going to be animated. So why bother? <laughs> it's, if it needed to be animated, I would work with an animator and a rigger to make sure that this works well. Making maybe a proxy mesh testing, it works well. But I'm not going to uh, waste my time doing something that's not going useful or fun for me at least right we all have our our kinks in treaty and mine is uh mine is more about the the design yes you could say by the way thanks for the follow uh and yes someone could say like well you're going far uh, in polishing for the design and for you to you i will say shut up and let me do what i want <laughs> all right um let's uh let's make uh, clean meshes for those and work with those i'll be adding some mid detail to that uh but uh, for the moment, I'm ready to actually have uh, a clean mesh to start working from. So, uh, yep, 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 let's do it. Let's do it. Grab this, I'll make a clean mesh. And like I said, I think I'll be using topology for this one because it can get pretty tricky. Pretty tricky to make this uh, just like this blade here clean this part here, and uh, topology will just help us do it faster. So uh, why not? Eh, why not? Um, so what I'll be doing is maybe starting from a s cylinder and extruding. Yeah, that's what I will be. So let's start with the cylinder part here. Oops. There you go. Let's remove the edges. I'm in Z modeler right now. Switching from on and off Z modeler. When I'm working on topology, I always have my Z modeler quick key right here. Um, there might be a bit too much uh, edges. So um, what I'll do is I'll actually Move this part and just remove one edge every two go and I'll reclose those using close convex hole. 
So this way I have the topology. So now what I'll be doing is I'll use I'll use extrusion tool. I'm gonna remove the uh, edge in the middle. And this way I can now just simply use the move brush to move my, my vertices around. I'll be adding the slope of the blade uh, later. Hmm. If I can, I'll try to avoid to have a star on the blade. Uh, all right, let's do another extrusion. Oh no, actually I want this to turn this way, so I'll need uh Okay, I'll do some weird maneuvering for a second. Just want to create a uh This is more what I want. I'll try to, I always try to have somewhat of a, try to have squares the most that I can when placing topology, because if I work with rectangle at some point, when it's gonna be time to place the alphas later, it might actually start to get annoying. So see like, I'll try to have like squares like this. All right, so now I actually am ready to place the rest. So I'll just take these much further and I'll simply be insert edge. Actually, I think I, what I can do is pretty much uh, go and place them much at the end of the I won't place every edge with that technique. I'm just trying to get uh, a bit of a feel for, uh, for it. Bye, Madzi. I might uh, collapse my edges here because it's gonna start to be really crowded. But uh, yeah, let's see. Actually, I'll work with that tip. All right, so for the moment now, let's just add a few more edges to make a square, to, and uh, making sure that they, they are square, I mean, or close to being square, just so that the resolution stays relatively 
and here I guess that actually I think I, I might actually uh, collapse something here. To not make that much polygon trying to be uh, save on the poly count a bit. I'm trying to say. Let's continue. Right, and now we're gonna round all of this mess. Uh, we're gonna use uh, polygrouping by angle. Trying to keep a couple of hard edges. I'll storm morph target this in case it rounds too much my shape. Let's polish by group. You see, it's rounding. My, it's rounding a bit too much uh, here. But I need to create other polygroups. But it should be good. So now, if I just using polish by groups, it's rounding everything. The 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 circle here is too rounded, so that's why I will use my morph brush to get back the shape that uh that morphed uh, maybe too dr too drastically. There we go. And now I can go back at it, just making it a little bit smoother, removing my creases that I don't need, working on this shape a bit. There we go. All clean now. All clean. All right, so I'll just need to add this uh, edge here so it looks uh, sharper. I snow 94, where are you for your day to be starting? Can I guess that it's the Philippines? It's just a guess. I have like no idea. <laughs> uh, just trying to be lucky. Get a lucky guess. Let's extrude this. It's going to be the blade part. Yakutia, where is that? <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm just using my knowledge of like time uh, time zones, but I have no idea in the end, you know? Oops, that's weird. I pushed that back here. And for this thing that I added, I'm going to make sure that both sides are pretty much right next to the other to simulate sharpness of the blade. Zing! There you go. And uh, I'll be uh, pushing pushing this. Actually, I'll be using the clip tool as an ellipse. I just have to remove the square shape, so now I can actually try to try to cut it like this. First, let's make sure I do not destroy any.
There you go. Sweet. All right. And I will also need to make sure that the blade is going inside like All right, we are gold. So that's the shape I'll be. In. All right, cool, cool, cool. So now um, I just need to place a few creases and we'll be good. Thanks for the follow. So uh, the test, uh, the smoothing, I always just like uh, use dynamic subdivision to, to see what it does. That's what I get with dynamic subdivision. But if I add like all of my uh, poly group, if I make uh, creases out of them, now it actually it keeps some uh, hard surface. Be adding a few um, different poly groups. Get that shape, and I can even add some. I noticed a little dent here. There you go. Perf. I need to make that even sharper. Well, I mean, you know what, if I'm going to print that later, it can't be too sharp, but eh, you know what, I'll do it for the moment anyway. A bit sharper. Yeah, it looks uh, dangerous. Okay, well, this is how it's going to uh, keep its uh, sharpness, but I want it to kind of curve a bit here, so I'll remove the edge loop around here and you see the star that I placed here is kind of like fucking me up right now so uh, I might actually need to just change the topology around here just a bit but I don't have this ugly star making that I mean I could always like polish it by hand uh, but I'm going to be fighting against it a lot so I'll simply see it this way it's kind of like a weird topology around here. But it's all quads. Could even even maybe just do this. A little bit cleaner like this. Oops. There's a triangle, but it's a flat surface, so it's not going to really cause me any, any issues. But at least now, oops, there's a problem with that mesh. If I do a fixed mesh, but we're good now. Okay, perfect. You see, like, we don't really, like, see anything, so that's good. It's now minus 36 degrees. Wow, okay. Well, last week, for me, it was minus 30, so I, I feel, I feel your pain. Let me, uh, let me tell you that, uh, 
I get what you mean. <laughs> oh boy, eh? Yeah, I'm doodling around here, but it's because I I, I actually want to have um, I don't want to I want I want to have like somewhat of a good topology. You know? I'm uh, I guess I want to be placing a. Taking a bit more time that I actually wanted to spend in this area. But let's uh, let's do this well. I'm pretty sure now I actually hit the hit the good uh, the good love poly flow. Uh, it's going to be good like this. There we go. All right, that was tedious, but uh, that's going to be good. Oh, there we go. This is rounded. Got this here. I got my um, the sphere is intact, so uh, that's good. That's good. That's good. All right, let's use this. Let's use this. Um, something I could do to make uh the blade even like sharper, more vicious, is uh add a, an insert in there. Well, it's kind of like going too far here, but be using it as an example. Uh, Oh, you see now I don't have the edge that's appearing. It's uh, sometimes depending on like where on the edge you place your insert, it will either like use one loop direction or the other. So now we're good. If I actually take this, go and move infinite radius and use alt, it kind of like makes like a curvy uh, blade. But uh, I find that having it flat works a bit more with the uh, hard surface nature of uh, uh, this mech. Crease problem here. Now we're good. Do we have a crease problem at the tip? No, we seem to be. Okay, all right. Right, right. And now to make the, uh, the dents that I wanted to place on the first third for, uh, for this, uh, I'll actually be uh, using a Boolean there's probably a way for it for me to make it with topology, but uh, I think that with Boolean it's going to be good enough. So let's uh, place the Boolean right now, just uh, while we're at it, basically. I wonder what if I do this? What if I use split? So first I'll need to remove this edge. Yep. There we go. What if I use split? Or what if I use bevel? Oh, it's gonna create an open hole. Eh? No. Split. It's all messy. That doesn't work. Plus, it, it would take like a lot of time just to recreate the thing. Ah, it's sad because it could have worked. Thanks for the follow. I just I'm afraid that it's also going to be a uh, dirty like the blade topology or smoothing. Well, I don't know. It kind of like. Uh, Kind of looks okay. I might actually try this. Let's try it. Split. And split here. No, oh, they're a bit too far, too much far apart. Ah. My second split might actually create a... Not even. Hmm. Yeah, let's try. This actually might uh, fail. Uh, we'll see. 
experiment together. Okay, I have my first third. We're good. Now let's get rid of all those things. Let's go in double sided. Get rid of all of those things. Right. All right, and now for the tedious part, we're gonna need to rebridge everything. All right. Oh my God. Yeah, those are uh, prison. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, don't, don't get on my nerves. Let's, try, let's uh, test it. Ah, uh, you know what? It works. I'm not even going to need to use booleans. The the split on the vertex actually worked uh, well enough. I might have wanted to make it deeper, but uh, you know what? I'm actually not going to fight against that. It's going to be good enough. All right. It's just really tedious. Like, I am not using ZBrush to do apology work but in that case i do well you know what you know what's good about this is that i've been use showing like sculpting and stuff and uh and this is kind of like at this point it's kind of like variety that i actually do uh like topology stuff like this so um i mean for like for this instant of the twitch stream it's kind of like boring as hell but on the overall at least i'm showing a few uh, approaches so that's kind of kind of a good thing thanks for the follow There you go, finally. Jeez. That was tedious. That was tedious. Okay. All right, let's select all this here. Oops, no, it's too much. Perfect. Hmm, what happened to you here? What happened here? Stupid. What happened?
Okay, weird. It's not a triangle anymore. I mean, it's not a square anymore, so what? There's a maneuver somewhere that I did that uh, fucked it up, I guess. So let's recreate the tip. All right, there you go. Once again. Okay, good. Wow, that. Back to normal, back to normal, all right. I need to re remove these here. Now it's round, now we're good. Grease here. Thanks for the follow. even need to crease here. That is good. Okay, cool. Let's give it a, uh, I always love to use uh, crease levels just around my, uh, my hard uh, surface. Uh, my hard surface edges. Oh yeah, it's the star that's doing area. Okay, there we go. So this is offering a little bit of roundness if I actually crease level at three, but subdivide by four. I got my little dance here. There's a little um, like problems here in the topology. It's kind of like doing some pinches, but it's uh, not enough to be a problem. I can live with that. It's not um, the most clean, but uh, we won't really see it. Going through art station, your skills are unfair against everyone. <laughs> this is madness. <laughs> Thanks for the comment. Yeah, practice makes perfect, that's for sure. Hi, Marco Briz. Thank you. No, I'm just using ZBrush. Thanks, Alex. See you lot. Uh, Bivol Pro is it's just not working with my sensibilities, so I'm not really using it. Uh, Zen Modeler, actually, I find that it's at first I was like, ah, oh, they're gonna add like a topology sub like sub tool in that uh, sub tool a topology tool in this software. But uh, you know what? All in all, I'm really happy that they did because I'm I actually really use it for some parts of the models, like those like orthographic blueprint ish shapes, whatever. That's how I call them blueprint because view it from the side and you have to be surgical about like the the shapes and everything uh it actually i uh, i appreciate it i appreciate the z modeler tool uh so that, yes when i remove the center but but it always had like two sides so that's the thing i'm not sure there's probably like a welding that happened at some point or i don't know anyways so let's create um Bit of an inset here. Inflate to move that. 
I actually like the roundness. I'm not going to crease that polygroup here, but I will and set again extrude. Go and get the shape here. There we go. Replacing this in the middle. All right. This is my blocking sub tool. I won't need it anymore. So goodbye. Yeah, first blade done. Let's save that. Um, I I love to do to use happy accident. Uh, I'm. I'm uh I I think that one would have been hard to make a happy accident with. <laughs> All right. So, uh in order to not repeat too much of the same thing, I'll actually go straight into uh polishing the last details for the blade. So, uh let's uh let's do it. All right. So, since I'll be uh what I'll do is I'll just duplicate this mesh, keep it in my backups, just in case I actually make a mistake and because I'm going to be committing the uh, dynamic subdivision into uh, real subdivisions. And to make sure that I subdivide the right amount before starting to create layers, I'm going to load my alphas, the alphas that I told myself I was going to reuse throughout the project. And I'll just take one alpha that might be like one of my smallest uh, level of detail. I always take the capsule shape, capsule shape at the 33 of size. This is kind of like my test run. And if I am able to place it on a blade and it looks of a good enough resolution, this will be all right for me. So you see where like my squares are actually a bit bigger, like here. And if I go against the topology, I actually get a lot of uh, a lot of um jaggedness but uh, if i actually place basically here you see it's like really like looks nice so the question is will i be uh placing details in this area because i don't really want to subdivide more right now i am i am i am at 400,000 on this uh tool um does it justify to go four times bigger so 2 million so i sub subdivide now i'm at 2 million now it's beautiful everywhere but was it maybe overkill? And um, my gut feeling tells me that at 500,000, I'm going to be okay. And I'll start by doing a little test, placing some mid details here and see if actually it works well. So I'll just do a quick test. Right now it's all crooked. I'll need to do that more cleanly if I want to keep this. Let's see if I do like something like that. Uh, I feel like it's clean enough because I mean, I don't see myself doing like screenshots that will go like closer than this here right now. So you know what, I think that this is going to be good enough. Good enough for rock and roll. Yep. I'll drink to that. All right, let's do this. There's already something that I just saw in my mind's eye. I'll be adding like a tube coming out of this. Like if uh, the tube was actually providing some energy or liquid inside of the blade. So let's, uh, let's do that right now. Let's go grab like a tube somewhere that I have on this character here. Do I have a tube? Do I have a tube? It's a tube. Is there another tube? 
need to find a tube. I'm the tube finder. Oh my god, I never realized I have like a big fucking like hole right there now. How did I create that? Is there always a hole here? Oh, I'll need to fill that eventually. Uh, I think I'll be using this here, this thing. Yep. Okay, all right, so let's go back here. Insert. Go. Oh. Place it in the middle. I tend to reuse a lot of pieces on the same character and from one character to the other if they are from a similar style and universe, of course. Like I don't just like arbitrarily, uh, systematically use uh, always the same uh, tools because like sometimes it, it just wouldn't fit. I made that mistake at the beginning of my career and I, I realized that I like it, so. Here we go. Is it in the middle of my scene? Actually, I'll, I'll place this object orthographically like I did last time, just by snapping using some uh, of uh, their, uh, some of its uh, existing. Uh... And you see, like using the. Uh... Yep, there we go. So now it's pretty much in the middle. One test that you can do is you can actually just mirror and weld. And if like the shape changes too much, it's a good indicator that you're not really in the middle. That it's a bit bad. There we go. I could even like place tubes maybe to, that will go on the back of that thing here. But if it, this thing was to close on itself, the tubes kind of like have a problem. What if I give them some loose? Yeah, let's try that. Yeah, let's try that. That's actually giving me an idea. Okay, cool. Uh, so for the moment, uh, I'll uh, just kind of like create a, let's call that a socketing. Control click inside of the mask so it just blurs in one direction. And when I'll be pushing this uh, for, and when I'll be pushing this outside, it'll create this like rounding effect. So it kind of like creates some shape. Like if there was like an intentional uh, dent that this would go in, and I can use my uh, trim hole to create the the hole that this goes in. Just need to be a bit bigger. Ah, you know what? Good enough. Whatever. There we go. Um, let's 
place the tube right now just for me as a reminder especially the uh, strap no not strap curve tube snap do something like this. I'll pull on it so it kind of like loses Split it into its own object. So if I was to 3D print this, uh, of course, uh, the two need to be uh, separate, separate mesh. Because I'm creating some pretty hardcore negative space right now. Negative space is pretty cool, but when printing, it causes problems. All right, let's uh, add some noise on the cable. I had this little like thing here. I'll probably add another one. Cool, cool, cool. So of course, like uh, here, they'll need. I will need to add like something that's kind of like going to uh, put that in. Let's uh, add a a second little smaller cable on top. So I just duplicated this. Actually, I'm going to take the old one, remove its detail I still have like this one here right so like this one I can just like inflate on itself move it here I'm not gonna create negative space on this one like negative space is cool but like uh, I tend to think of my model like if I was to print them, and this would be an issue if I was to print them. So I'll try to not
come on. I need to get out of uh, dynamic subdivision sometimes because uh, I can't really... Uh... Oops, see, that's a happy mistake here. I'll be using this in my favor. Yeah, I'll be safe. I don't know if it's going to be too much noise. I don't think I need this for the moment. I'll see you later. I'll see you later. Yeah, I went silent for a little bit. I was uh, kind of like in my head. Uh, it. I'll actually twist the smaller cable a little bit around it. Give some uh, some life to it. It's not like so perfect. Yeah, that helps a lot. All righty then. Now that I have this thing here added, I'll go and add some else to this mesh here. Um, I'll start by making. Oh, I didn't have a layer on this. 
about to add my layer earlier. Thanks for the follow. To yeah. I always sharpen and blur when I um when I mask something when I'm about to use the mask. Does it actually uh, soften the, the edges a bit? It's going to give it a different material and color inside here. There we go. Joint D there. I see what you mean. The Gruber, hello. I wish I could round this area a little bit. This is fighting against the topology a bit, but I think that I am actually able to do something decent, so let's just try and see. There we go. All right, next. What what should I place next? Uh, maybe I should go for what I was trying to do earlier, like the kind of like a, the hollowing of the plates make them lighter but not everywhere just like in this first section here try to have parallel lines I could also use maybe the, the topology a bit to uh, Oops, it is not what I was trying to do.
All right, that should be good. House bigger. Uh, it's not bad. Just realized my mask is not top notch though, because here it's should be a bit more rounded. I think I should keep that subtle. So what I'll do is I'll just blur the mask a little bit and smooth it out. Bit more smoothed. The apology around here is not reacting super. I wonder if I should. It's here. All right. Uh, it's all jagged. My, um, the, uh, Those lines here, they're too thin for the resolution. So you see, like, in retrospective, I should have maybe boosted the resolution a bit. But let's try to salvage, salvage this. Should be all right. Let's try it. smoothing a tiny bit. All right, let's go for that. So for the rest, uh, I'll probably just play some small um, cavity lines. Should be enough. Let's try to have uh, somewhat of a a good line. Okay, this is going to be okay. I like cavity line. I'll add some detail in my cavity line, like another. Okay, I'll remove the lazy, remove the lazy mouse on my mask. That's a bit bothersome. Or.
All right, that's good. Make some little things like if this plate could be popped out. Some mechanical stuff inside. I'll place the counterpart first. to affect the inside, so I'll just mask temporarily. There we go. Thanks. here but let's try this. all right have a good one alex Put some smaller detail in there. Thanks for the follow.
Do you use a base mesh or always make from a sphere? Oh, both. I actually I'll turn it between both. Like uh when I do creatures, I'll uh most often I'll just start from a sphere because there's not really a reason to start from a base mesh. But um if I uh if I do a human character I might uh just uh start from a base mesh. This character it's like the stupidness character, I don't even remember if I like it's not too long ago, but I don't even remember if I started from a, a base mesh or a, something else. Uh, I think I started from a human body. I don't remember. Uh, no, this character is not finished yet because I work on it two hours per week. So it's going to take a while before it's, uh, it's finished. I'm working on another project and, uh, during the day, well, during the day when I have time, because I take care of, I, I manage my own company. So, uh, that takes a lot of time. Uh, in terms of like normal development, if for example, like somebody hired me eight hours per day to create the, make this character. Uh, it would probably take me about a week or two to finish it. Do you got, do you buy Final Fantasy Remake or God of War for my PC? Uh, God of War is the better game, I think. Um, I still had fun with Final Fantasy Remake, but uh, God of War is the better game. Tighter, tighter gameplay, um, or uh, gravitas in the cinematic and the story. I find, yeah, it's just my opinion. Eh? Let's go for that. The whole like grid thing might actually be uh, a bit busy in retrospective, but uh, let's uh, let's look at it and maybe I've I will come to another conclusion later. All right, onto this guy here. That's going to be a lot of rinse and repeat. Uh, A lot of time, actually, you thought they would give like a few days per one character. Um, no. Um, 
like for example for making a character like this uh, and putting it in game uh, like uh, usual time would be around two months of work total the average time I don't know if you ever worked uh, as a character artist, but uh, it takes a shit ton of time to model a character. Like this piece here, I could actually try to model it just with a simple Z remesh, not even using the uh, using the then modeler. Let's try that. Still clone it in case I need to reproject. Give it a thousand polygon. It's not the best apology. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh. Like an easy shape. Let's just start with a cube here. Q cube. Oh, no, no, don't worry if you're taking time to do your characters. You just started, and uh, like I said, uh, it's a super long process, especially when you're doing complex characters, especially when you're doing mechanic characters. I mean, it's going to take time. Everybody, anybody's going to take time for doing those those things, so don't worry that it takes time. Like, take really the time to learn, do it well. Don't be too hard on yourself. And especially try to enjoy it. In your opinion, what needs to be done to overcome the average level in 3D modeling? Needs to be done because, like the the general answer about like how to become good, that's a bit easier to answer. Uh, like I'll I'll answer this uh, first. I'll try to think of uh, the answer to your more. A precise question. 
while doing this exercise. But um be good. I mean you need to work day and night, dedicate yourself to that. You need to go forward, try new things, take time, study, study, like get references, try to understand what was in the mind of the artist when he was doing what he was doing. Try to uh, check tutorials because sometimes they'll basically just tell you. Um, continue watching my stream. <laughs> um, like those things, I mean, it's really like persistence is uh, really the key to be able to, hey, sort of follow. Uh, persistence is really the key to be able to, to become good at doing it. And it's like, it's like they say, hey, it's going to take you like 10,000 hours to be able to learn how to do something correctly. So it's a, it's a long, long, long process. Uh, but the thing is that when you work at it, you're never, you're never going to become like, less good you're always going to be uh like better every time that you do something um but i feel that maybe what stops some people at like you say the uh, average level um which i i don't really like using those terms i i feel uh, i'm being like judgmental towards people but i mean uh that's, that's just still use these uh these terminologies um i think it's per... i think it's probably is really just time because like you could say that like oh like some people they just have like a better eye than other people but the thing is that those people they they got their eye for things because they took the time to study other people's work and really like sit down with it, uh, like really look at it, ponder, study it. This takes a lot of time. And sometimes it's like, oh, uh, you'd rather just like do something else or I don't know. No, sometimes you really need to waste a lot of time just looking at something. Trying to understand how it works. We really try to feel it. If I feel it, um, what I mean by that is that um, uh, I think that when your brain is convinced that um, what you see is like credible or appealing. That's a good indicator that like for example like your work is 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 well done so when you see like an art piece and you see that it's actually like it evokes something even if you just like even if it's not really your style or um or you don't really love the entire piece but you know that there's something about the piece that you like uh it's 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 kind of like good to stop for a moment and just like try to figure out like what it is what's the thing that really like captures you and like you might actually find the answer and realize like oh i think it's like this kind of like line movement right here like a stupid thing like not a stupid thing but like an abstract thing and maybe like you'll just like try it but also like tutorials stuff like that like there's some stuff that i learned on tutorials that were just not even like 3d art like uh there was i learned a lot from a tutorial about composition which was more for like painters but uh man there was a lot of good stuff in there trying to keep those uh edges uh round i like uh round round edges even for uh even if i'm I'm a hard surface guy I might actually have one side that is uh, hard and the other side that's uh, round like this one here see 
it's kind of cool. It's round, then it becomes like more hard surface here. It'll need probably to be a bit more hard surface though, so I'll augment the crease level. Do like that, that's good. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Oh, I'll round this, oops, this part right here though. There we go. See it like sockets in a bit better. Should I do it right here? Yeah, let's do it right here as well. Ah, this is turning out great. There we go. Awesome. Good show, good show. It's very inspiration sources. Inspiration sources. Well, I mean, like there's a fair share of good uh, artists on uh, art station. Really depends what, what you like. I, I suggest just going on art station, looking at like uh, what you um, what what uh, like what you like. Um, Having those becoming your main inspirations could be a good idea. I also recommend to um, find inspirations that are outside of, um, like, uh, well, art station and like what's commonly known in our industry. Like me, for example, at some point I was always listening to. Um, I was always listening to um, Planet Earth, narrated by uh, Dave Attenborough. I just loved the, uh, first of all, I just loved the vibe of the, the show. But also I found a lot of inspiration in, uh, in animals. Um, yeah. I find that something is that's also really, um, it's really in, in inspiring. Uh, is uh, when you find like something that has like a story, when you find a story beyond your work. Uh, I don't always try to find like a story. Like this character is, it's pretty much just like a a, uh, a mantis trying to make a, a mantis look uh, mechanical. <laughs> it's not like a huge exercise, um, but uh, but it. it it's enjoyable sometimes to not really have uh not really think too much about it but uh when i create big projects i actually like to um consider maybe um going the extra mile and uh try to find like a reason for my character to exist uh, the world in which he exists like um this there's this uh really old uh project that I did that was called the Seven Sinners, which was basically um which was basically the uh seven deadly sins portrayed in a in a way that I that I liked. And um I actually did some some, some research about like uh how um those sins are perceived by uh um by the public uh, by religion and by whatever and uh trying to get a few keywords that well represent uh, the characters and uh, those keywords uh they evoked uh things like in my in my mind's eye 
right? Like they made me think of uh, like for example, like uh, the the sin of pride. Well, pride. Um, did some research and like things like oh uh, peacocking, like uh, came to mind. Uh, peacocking, which is the uh, a phenomenon of trying to make yourself more uh, apparent, apparent, apparent than uh, other uh, people when you're in a, a public uh, place. Say like uh, people that are peacocking, or it's people like that. I would put like a a weird hat to just to get the attention of people. Um, and I was like, oh well, you know what? Like, peacock. That's a good. Uh, that's a that's a good word. That's a good word to that I want to evoke in the character. And the character didn't end up actually looking like a peacock. Well, she did have like some kind of like weird weirdness and elegance, but um, I'm just trying to say that like what was important for me is just pretty much finding like words that could like inspire me and uh and that's what i did and uh that's where uh, that's the direction i went create the to create those another uh, big project that i used um another project that i kind of like used a similar technique was uh the four horsemen my uh, latest project Four horsemen were. Um, oh, I did this little detail by accident. That's uh, because the other side. Ah, oh, this is not symmetrical. My piece is not symmetrical. No. Oh. You know something we can try to do? Let's try to mirror and weld and see if it can reconstruct subdivision. When the objects are in the middle like this, sometimes it doesn't work, but let's try it. Yes, it does work. Okay. Ooh. Also, I should have been safer and use uh, layers. Layers are the condom of ZBrush. Because if you actually make a mistake, you can go back. But yeah, what I was saying about the four horsemen is uh um before I started this project I made a lot of uh yeah, well a lot. I I made some research about like um like how the 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 the, the, the four horsemen have been portrayed uh by uh, various uh like religions or like factions of religions whatever um and I, it gave me a couple of like uh cues that i thought was pretty interesting like for example like s some of them had actually colors assigned to them some of them had alchemy uh alchemy uh, things associated to them um alchemy symbol alchemy and uh they had weapons they had uh few things and uh i was like oh yeah i can use that that would be cool actually and um so yeah so i did i uh upon the research that i did i found a few keywords of things that could be interesting things that could also like help um differentiate them make them like uh different one from the other in a sense I, for example i didn't want all of them to to be riding horses i want to I wanted um like I wanted different mounts for each of them. So like maybe Death was riding a horse. Well it's it's more like a unicorn he's riding in my um depiction. But uh like I wanted the better animals for the others. So War War is actually riding a uh, a bear. Um Pestilence is riding Again, in a bear, the reason why it's a bear. Thanks for the follow. 
the reason why it's a bear is because it's like a, a massive animal, right? Like I tried like a lion, I tried a saber tooth tiger, but it, I don't know, it didn't work. But the bear really felt like like a beastly thing that I wanted. And uh, pestilence, I wanted to have like a snake, but she's kind of like the long range um, of the gang also. So I just made it like a flying snake. Like a, Kind of like a dragon a bit, but not really a dragon. Really a flying snake. Because a pestilence is like... You think of pestilence, you think of like poison, that sort of stuff. That's why I kept into like this... Uh, this uh, vibe. And um, Famine is uh, riding a uh, a giant maggot. I kind of like make it look like a, a sandworm. Actually, a, a giant maggot. Famine, you think of famine, decay. Uh, what thrives from decay? Maggots. Yeah, using dreams is actually a good idea as well. I could never put in 3D what I have in my dreams because it is like madness. My dreams are madness. First of all, I don't dream often. I dream fairly rarely. It's fairly rare that I dream. And when I dream, it's always extreme chaos and it like changes. It doesn't stay the same, like one person becomes another person. It, it's like, oh yeah, no, it's just, it's crazy. <laughs> and it's like, like to a point that it's like, like if you were to ask me like, oh, did you, do you have night nightmares sometimes? Like the answer would be like, um, no. And I, and I don't have like good dreams either, because like I said, I always just dream of complete madness.
Cool. That's a, that's a good dream right there. The duck dream. Motor duck. <laughs> Thanks for the follow. See, the more I'm going for and the more I realize that like there's too much uh, of those things and on the front of the blade here. So I'll actually um, record a morph target of the state before I placed and I will or I place those mid detail and I will actually go and edit myself a bit and remove me this portion here. That's a bit better. Oh, eleven twenty-two. My my my. I wonder if uh, yeah. I think what I'll tr I'll try to finish real quick uh, the last part, and uh, I might actually go for just some like easy design stuff without trying to really make anything complex, and just like place it on the arm just to be able to say that at least I did the blade. So uh, let's try to. Let's try to go uh, quickly.
try something for this one. I'll actually okay, save first. And I'll use the knife brush to cut while having new poly groups. And then we'll see if ah, I missed it. We'll see if Z remesher is smart and good resolution. Sometimes it does some pretty magical stuff. It's really a question of knowing. Algorithm work. Okay, let's try like this. We have different polygroups and stuff. There's a dream mesh with keep with um, keep groups. Go for uh, 500 polys. Let's see what it gives me. What's the worst design that you're the least happy on ArtStation? Question, I mean, I'm, I I suffer from imposter syndrome, so like I tend to think that like a lot of what I do sucks. So um, it's hard to, hard to say. I got a question I don't really like to think about, to be honest. Um, I mean, I could try to find an answer, but uh, not really it comes to mind, and I don't really feel like judging myself too much either. And uh, if I need to, by answering this question, I feel like I would need to kind of like uh, judge myself, and uh, I'd rather not go there. If you were to put a, a gun to my head, <laughs> I would say that probably. And the answer is go as low as you can on the page of ArtStation. But a uh, will probably find a couple of them that are pretty old and uh, that I feel that I moved on and stuff that I maybe have forgotten to remove from ArtStation. But yeah, you see, like all in all, the Z Remesh was not that bad, to be honest. I want to maybe get rid of uh, a bit of a cleaner uh, apology going here. Here, yeah, the topology is a bit weird, but I'm sure I'll be able to, to play with that. There's like a weird triangle here, but uh, I'd rather go quickly with this one, so I won't be too critical, and I'll try to do with what I have. I hope this is not going to be too thick. We'll see when we're going to place it back. Okay, should I keep a couple of those 
bit more rounded. But if I actually remove the crease here, oops. yeah, that's cool. Oh, it wasn't. It was not a triangle. It was just a square that was a bit odd. I see, like. Doesn't look good. Okay, that should be good enough. But... This one I won't. I won't keep the. Uh... I won't make a backup. I'll just write by this. Now to clean this uh, the pinch right here, I'll simply use the planar tool. And then smooth. It's a bit better. Thanks for the follow. You see, like for example, right now I'm I'm starting to be so tired that I'm not really critical with my like good critical in a good way with my work. And uh, since I just want to finish for tonight, um, with like at least being able to say that I finished like part of the character, uh, I'll be pretty much going like on uh, automation mode, if I can call that call it that. Um, and, uh, this means I'm probably not going to always make the best decision, but, um, that's the point is that I'm going to let myself the opportunity to look at it again in the future. And maybe that I will see something that I didn't see. I will come back on it and improve uh, improve on it
Come out the tour. Bonjour, bonjour. It's a ZBrush. There's a sculpting software. Unlike Maya, which is more of a poly modeling software. Yeah, Blender is pretty cool. I wish that I would have time to actually learn uh, Blender. I'm just happy that it exists because uh, open source uh, software like this are doing great things for the uh, ecosystem of uh, the industry. Oof. It's not the size I thought it was going to be. Comment à tour, uh, yes, uh, I share your opinion. For the follow. Thanks again. Much appreciated.
Kamata Tool, you're asking me if I'm an artist by trade or for fun. Uh, I've been working 12 years in the video game industry, and I now own my own uh, character artist outsourcing uh, company. I've been uh, uh, doing that uh, professionally for a, for a good a good while now, for a very long time. Uh, yeah, ZBrush changed uh, partners. Uh, was bought by another company. I mean, and uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what it's gonna do. I'm uh, I'm not pessimistic. Of course, I'm hoping that it's not going to bring uh, che like bad changes. But uh, I'm uh, cautiously optimistic. Um, you're saying that ZBrush is now only subscription? I don't think that it's true. As far as I know, they kept the, uh, the license that you can just buy once. At least it was that a few weeks or months ago. Um, Clown Akira, I actually have uh, been having, I've had a perpetual license uh, since, uh, two years ago, and I've always been able to update, uh, so, but, uh, at the same time, I, I, like, I always work for the beta testing for, like, the new, well, always, like, often work for beta testing. ZBrush, so if there was ever a update, there could have been like maybe at some point like an update that you had to buy the software again. And I didn't know because they simply gave me like a free license, but as far as I know, it's been a free update for a long But I might be mistaking. Okay, I think I'm at the end of this. Like I said, um, I'm not really like trying to be. Uh, I'm trying to be the opposite of perfectionist right now, and just go like through the motion quickly in order to just like finish with this for tonight. Normally, I would have given myself much more time to um, ponder and. Uh, Consider maybe other options. Think about things. But now I just wanna, I just wanna go to bed. <laughs> so um, yeah. Let's just fix this error here. All right, so we'll place a blade on the character and we're going to call this a knight. Now we'll look at this again later and see if I'm still happy of the work. 
So at this point, what I will do is I will um, just merge everything together. For merging, I'll just make sure I don't have layers that are in the recording mode. No, that's good. Um, I'll need to collapse into subdivision my subtools that are in dynamic subdivision. The only one in the tube is this thing in the All right. So I just want to go. Thanks for the follow. Well, let me just save again. Commit to subdivision. Commit to subdivision. And now I can do merge visible. There you go. So it doesn't have um, subdivisions because those. Well, actually. Oh no, you see, I can reconstruct. Eh, I can reconstruct one level of subdivision. That's not bad. It's going to make it less heavy. And now I can go back in my scene here. Change those placeholders. Work the actual thing. Hopefully it's going to work because uh, I am pooped. I don't want to feel like I need to fix anything. Let me use the arm with high resolution. Thanks for the follow. All right, so I think it's well placed. Let's hide the old one. All right, there we go. I'll fix, uh, like, there's probably still some clipping in there, yeah. Because I have to integrate it better with, like, this part here. But uh, all in all, it seems to kind of work. Let's see if I can rotate this a bit. Thanks for the follow. Doing well. Oh, what the hell happened here? Thanks for the follow. Man, there's a lot of following happening right now. Makes me happy. All right. Yes. So I'll f I'll fix how both of them are like integrated together later. You see, that's that's not bad. 
Uh, do I like the cable? Well, I think that like that I'll need to fix on the original mesh if ever I go back. But I think I need to kind of like place it. Yeah, there we go. That was like too much thing happening near the hands. There we go. Yay, I made the blades. I was able to do the blades before the end of the night. I am proud of myself. This way, the next stream, I'll be able to complete like this part of the arm, the upper arm. Well, probably, like, uh, maybe if we're lucky, I might be able to complete the entire arm. Well, maybe not. No, there's like also the elbow to do stuff and this like junction here is going to, I'm actually going to have to think about something so maybe it's going to take me like two more sessions to complete the arm but once that the arm is finished I'll just copy paste it like on the back here and I'll sim I'll I'll be able to tackle the body and finish with the head so yeah so that's going to be cool all right yeah 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 awesome yeah that's not bad all right uh not bad, not bad, not bad. Yep. Cool, 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 cool. All right, so eight slash blades. That's what I done. All right, great, great. Let's look at what people are saying. Yeah, Ghost of Christmas Future. I think that's pretty much it. It's been like, like free updates for like two decades. <laughs> like I mean, at the, like I'm this at this point since there's been like free updates for a long time. If they ever do like a major change to the software, like uh, like I'd be willing to to pay um, like um, for the update. Uh, I find that uh, ZBrush has been very generous so far and not abusing of people. So, um, like, I mean, uh, as long as they stay generous afterwards, like, I don't want them just to change and start making us pay all the time and stuff. But, like, I'm just saying that they've been so generous that at some point, like, I wouldn't mind just giving, giving again. Like, uh, as long as, like, it comes with, like, a big update or something. I don't know. If they give me my local symmetry, maybe. Like, I mean, I would do a lot to get my local symmetry tool. Oh, man, that would be so great. Um, yeah. We'll see. Cool stream. Thanks, thanks. Catch you next time, Cam. What the fuck, dude? It's awesome. Thank you. Thank uh, John Ullman. I uh, appreciate it. <laughs> don't Akira, that's, don't don't get desperate. Desperate. Um, this is this is supposed to be inspiration, inspiration to drive you. Uh, to add tags like 3D modeling, um, I think I've tried to add a few tags, but there was like not really like uh, any choices that came out. Like the only came uh, thing that came out was art. But uh, I'll look. Like, do you know for a fact that there's a tag that's called 3D modeling? Oh, thanks, SKR. That's uh, I really appreciate that. I actually don't super consider myself uh, an ad adept at designing, and maybe it's just me. That maybe I'm just too hard on myself, but I really appreciate what you're saying. Um, Stager's fine, but um, I find that it's a bit wonky. I I, I want my local symmetry. 
<laughs> yes, I use OBS. Yeah. I'll try to look for uh for it. But I mean I use OBS, I use also the um which website now. I'll look into it. I left myself a note. Um yeah, I am getting so tired. That was the longest stream that I've ever did. That was uh, three hours. Three hours. Uh, but three great hours. We had fun, right? Am I right? Yes, we did. <laughs> um, yeah, that was great. That was great once again. Um, thanks for everyone for joining. Um, that was really fun. Uh, I always love to talk to you. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the stream, thank you so much for all the, the great comments. And uh, thank you for, for all the following um, people that are coming in. I really appreciate that. I'm having a lot of fun. So, I mean, the more that I can share the love, the more that it makes me happy. So, um, yep, much appreciated. So we have the plan for next time. I'll try to finish the arm or part of the arm at least. And um, at some point I'll finish this character and I'll simply start a new one. And uh, yeah, so this character will have been done pretty much like from the ground up, at least like the polishing stage from the ground up will have been done uh, all by stream, little by little. Maybe in some future, like I'll work on like part of the character, complete some on the side and stuff. Like, I don't know if like some people are getting fed up. It's not always the same character. I know that other people are just really happy to see really each like every step uh but it's a long process and i don't know i mean i'm new at streaming so i don't really know like what's the best thing to do i don't really um look at other streams to be honest i'm just doing what feels right for me so uh and what i think feels right for the people so we'll see we'll see i mean i always read every comment so if people have like commentary and stuff hey why not Mention them, I'll read them. Um, yeah. Blades are a good time. <laughs> under, under the categories, there are tags where you can. Thanks for. Yeah. yeah. I do. All right, cool, awesome. I don't even look at them, so I don't even know where the ranks are. But uh, it's good to know. I'll see you next week. Thanks for the stream, Marco. Yep, no problem. All right. Well, on that, uh, I will wish you une bonne soirée. And uh, I will see you next week. Take care, everyone. <laughs>